All right, in front of us we have our thermal scientific uh, model 42i chemiluminescent analyzer used for measuring uh, nitric oxide, uh, nitrogen dioxide, and oxides of nitrogen, which is NOx. So you can see the three measurements listed up there with their concentrations right now. The first step we're going to do in this lab is we're going to pressure test uh, some of the, the tubing. We have some Teflon tubing and some plastic tubing. Um, polytubing here that is susceptible to getting punctured. So we want to just make sure there's no leaks before we proceed just because nitric oxide is harmful. We don't want to be breathing in nitric oxide gas. So uh, the first step here is we're going to be using a pressure gauge right here. I'm going to go ahead and just power that pressure digital pressure gauge on and we're going to connect a, uh, a line here to this side of the pressure gauge uh, and on the other side we have a quick connect fitting with a valve installed in it. If there's nothing, the quick connect fitting has nothing in it, then it will uh, block flow. So uh, this side over here though, there's no quick connect fitting. So that's what we're gonna connect up to. This is gonna block flow. And just on the back side, I'll just quickly show that uh, they're teed together here. And then this goes to the gauge for pressure measurement. So uh, on the other end of our line here, we've got a quick connect fitting. that's gonna plug into our gas dilution out. So all the stuff down below here has some plastic line. I'll take you around to the back of the cabinet just to show you in a second. Uh, but we're gonna connect that to there and it's gonna kind of dead end to our gauge and that's what we're gonna use to pressure test just to see if there's any leaks. Uh, so we have two variable aerometers or rotometers here that are gonna be used to regulating flow of a uh, nitrogen and nitric oxide. We're gonna be using nitrogen as a dilution gas to simulate different concentrations. Uh, this chart over here, this flow data chart over here is for these rotometers. Um, you can see here we're dealing with a sapphire sapphire ball in a rotometer. So the SA, so we're going to be dealing with this uh, this data right here. You can see that it has a scale reading and then the flow rate in milliliters per minute. A thousand milliliters per minute is one liter per minute. 150 is referring to, uh, you can see on the glass here, we've got a scale. It's referring to that scale. So that's what it's calibrated to. So I just take you around to the back side of this analyzer here. You'll see some of these lines. So this is a plastic line for just the nitrogen and then a Teflon line over here for our uh, nitric oxide because nitric oxide will absorb into, into the, the poly line. So they flow around to the back side there. You can see our two rotometers back over here. And uh, they uh, discharge out the top here and tee together. And when that tee goes out, that's where we are uh, that's where our pressure gauge is hooked up to. So you're gonna be pressure testing all of these lines to make sure that they're not leaking. So the first step here, we're gonna make sure that um, before we bring these on, we just wanna shut the valves on the bottom here for controlling flow. So we don't ram the uh, sapphire ball up really quick with a high flow rate. So we're just gonna take you back around to the back side. We're gonna use nitrogen, and it's in our bottle right here. This is the nitric oxide over on this side. In the nitrogen bottle here, we have our regulator, high pressure regulator. This being the high pressure side, this being the low pressure side of our regulator. This is the adjustment right here. This is the main valve for the cylinder. It's gonna allow the gas to come out and flow into our regulator. That's the pressure we're gonna see is the pressure in this valve on this gauge. And then on the discharge side of this regulator, that's what we're gonna see here. And then this is another valve on the regulator end on the lower pressure side that will open to allow nitrogen to flow out. So what we want to do is make sure this is backed out all the way. Check to make sure it's backed out all the way. Uh, that means when we open this, it's going to discharge nothing out onto this side. We'll just make sure this is shut too. So this should be shut. This should be open all the way, or not open, backed out all the way so we don't have pressure here. And uh, we'll just open this and we should see, just open it a slight amount. We should see a large amount of pressure in here. We're close to 2000 PSI. We only need to open this a very small amount. So if there is an emergency, we can quickly shut it to, uh, to uh, stop the 2000 PSI from, from leaving the bottle. So just open it a little bit. And then now we'll adjust this regulator here. And we should see our gauge start to climb. We'll take a little bit of an adjustment here. We're gonna set it to about five, to about five psi. So leave it right around there, and we can go ahead and open this. So now we should have five psi leaving this line and going over to our uh, nitrogen rotometer right here.
So coming up to the bottom here, we've got to open this valve. We should see this little sapphire ball blip up here when we have a little bit of flow into our system. So I'll just open this until that ball hops up. There, it kind of hopped up, so it, we have nitrogen coming in to pressure everything up. And uh, we'll also open up this side as well because we want to pressure test the whole dilution system. So see here the ball kind of rise up again there. See it kind of jumped up. It's filling up the system. So the valves are open. If you look over here, we have close to 5 PSI, 4.8 PSI on the system. Um, and I'm just going to double check to make sure that this is snugged up. It doesn't need to be super tight, just a little snugged up. And then we'll go over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shut this valve. And what that's going to do is going to block in all the pressure in these plastic lines. So this will be shut. And we're going to go over here and have a look. And we're going to watch this pressure. We want to watch this pressure for about a minute or two and make sure that it doesn't drop. That's going to indicate that we don't have any leaks in our plastic or Teflon lines. So it looks good. It's not dropping at all. Um, we would want to maybe wait a little bit longer than I'm going to right now. Just want to demonstrate what would happen if we did have a small leak. So i um, just going to slightly crack this line right here. I'm going to open it. Still nothing yet, but if we kind of just wiggle the line there, you can see the pressure is dropping off quite quickly. And then I'll tighten it up hand tight again. Even with hand tight, it's able to hold that four, 4 or 5 psi. I'll just kind of loosen off again, and you can see it's dropping. So if that happens, that means we have a leak, and we need to figure out what the where the leak is, if it's not just on this fitting. So now, uh, now that we're done with our pressure test, we can uh, what we can go ahead and do is we can bleed the rest of the pressure off the line here. Just kind of move this around until it drops to zero. I can pull the fitting right off. And now when we pull this out, there's going to be a valve now that shuts and seals everything in that we just pressure tested. We're going to be using this line right here. This is a Teflon line to connect the gas dilution out to the analyzer sample in. So there's going to be a suction here because there's a pump in this analyzer. You can hear it running right now. Um, and we're not pressure testing any of that downstream stuff because if there was a leak, it would just throw an error in our, in our concentration over here. It wouldn't be as much of a safety issue. But we're going to um, connect this from here to here. These both have valves in them. So once we put the quick connect fitting in, it's going to open and we're now going to allow gas to flow through. So the first one that we want to connect to is this one because it's going to have the vacuum and it's going to be pulling gas. So then when we go and connect this one, if there was any pressure, the vacuum should then suck it in. So connect this one, then this one, when we're uh, connecting this in. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that. Right? All right, so we've connected this line here. You can see that the, uh, just want to give it a little tug test just to make sure that they are connected in, but you can see the lines connected. And uh, the next step here, we should make sure that these are fully shut before we bring any gas into the analyzer. So we had these open for the pressure test. So we'll shut both of these. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing now is just a quick little demo of how this analyzer does work. We said that we kind of saw the backside here of what was going on with our, our mixing station here. The gas dilution out is gonna come into the analyzer sample in. I'll just take you around on the other side here. You can see this line, this line right here is the analyzer coming in. It's got a filter on the line there to filter out any particulate that may get into the sample. Uh, and then it flows up and comes in to this cross right here. And then you can see it goes to the sample, sample port on the back side of the analyzer. Um, there is also a line that connects down and kind of just loops. You can see loops over and back to this side which is, if I can get you in there, you can see it is the, uh, the exhaust right there. So when uh, we don't have anything connected, since there is a pump inside of this analyzer, when we uh, don't have a sample connected, it'll just sit there and recirculate between the exhaust and the sample end, uh, so we don't damage the pump. Um, but if uh, we do introduce a sample, then it will start flowing into the sample and coming out through the exhaust here, and then it will come out on this braided line here uh, that's kind of protected from mechanical reasons so it doesn't get punctured and then it just discharged out our vent here. So the nitric oxide gets discharged outside so it isn't sitting in the room here and we're breathing it in. Um, so yeah, the analyzer does work on the principle. It has a chemiluminescent reaction that produces light between uh, nitric oxide and, um, and O3. 
which is ozone. And so right here you can see this is our, our air dryer. We have, uh, it sucks oxygen into that port at the back there. And then it comes in, goes to the air dryer and then it comes in to our analyzer right over on our dry air in, which is right up top here, dry air in. We need that dry air in for the oxygen, the O2, it then gets converted to O3 or ozone. And then it reacts with our, with our, uh, our nitric oxide and that's how we get our reading there. So, um, the, uh, the analyzer works, it can measure both, uh, nit it can measure the uh, nitric oxide and then by using a switching or a bypass it can then, it can then measure the concentration of NO2 and the two added together equal NOx, right? So, um, we'll learn a little bit more about that in the classroom, how that whole calculation works and how the reaction works a little bit more there. But that's basically what's happening. We have a chemical reaction that's producing light and then a detector senses that. So the more NO we have in the sample, the more light will be produced. All right, so now I'm just gonna bring uh, pressure up both bottles here. We've already got pressure. We've already opened this main valve and it's still open just a quarter to an eighth of a turn. Set at five PSI. I'm gonna open this back up. We've shut our rotometer valves, so we shouldn't have any flow. So we'll open that, set to five. And then we're just gonna take you guys around over to the other bottle. The other bottle has 50.1 ppm. Uh, it should be labeled here somewhere. Uh, you can see there it says nitric oxide. And it's balanced, it's balanced with, with nitrogen. So all of the other gas is nitrogen and there's 50 ppm of nitric oxide in the bottle. So, and actually, uh, we need to go around to the other side. Just go back around to bring it on. So over here you can see we're all at zero and we should make sure that it's at zero before we do the pressure test or any of that. All of the gauges on both of these should be at zero before we do our pressure test. Um, so this is at zero and we're gonna make sure this regular is backed all the way out it is. This is shut. And so now I'm just gonna give this, give this power cord, give this a little bit of a quarter turn and it's gonna pressure up as well. So you just need to open it enough to see pressure on that gauge and then we can also pressure this one up to five PSI as well. So now we're sitting at five PSI. We can go ahead and open this because we pressure tested our system. And then now our next step here is we're gonna put flow through these rotometers. So what I wanted to simulate is we have 50 ppm in our nitric oxide and I wanna dilute it with more nitrogen. So I wanna be able to simulate uh, a concentration of, of about a quarter, a quarter of that. So a quarter of that would be about 12.5 ppm nitric oxide. So to do that, we need to have, uh, we wanna have, we wanna have close to uh, a thousand milliliters per minute total flow. Uh, so that would be, um, if we wanna do that, and we want, we want to, have our two flow rates we want to have the one flow rate being um, a quarter of the other so or a quarter of that sorry so we need one of the flow rates or the the, the, the calibration gas which is going to be the nitric oxide we want it to be at about 250 so we'll set it for 30 so right around 250 or 258 in this case and the other one we want to be around 750 so the closest to that is going to be about 100 or just a little bit less so just under 100 so we're going to set the nitrogen to just under 100 and we're gonna set the nitric oxide to around 30. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start off by setting the nitric oxide to about 30. So I'll open this until our scale reads about 30. And the way that we read it is we want that ball, the center of that ball to be right on our line. So there, it's pretty close to 30. We'll have to adjust these after we get the nitrogen flowing. We wanted to set the nitrogen for about 100. So that's pretty good at 100. And over here we've dropped a bit, so let's just increase this a bit. Pretty finicky. close to 30 and over here on 100 we've climbed so we're gonna have to kind of balance these two 
I move them back and forth a few times because one will affect the other. There, they look pretty close there. And now if you look at a reading up here, it might take a little bit to stabilize, but we're pretty close. We're uh, pretty close to 12. So the analyzer might be slightly out. Uh, it might be stable right now. It's going up still a little bit, sort of 12. So we're aiming for 12.5 with that 50 ppm concentration. We're pretty close to that. Um, and you'll notice here the NOx is almost matching the NO, and it's just because we should have barely any NO2 in the calibration. Yes, we should ideally have none in there, right? So, um, and that's what the NOx is, is gonna be the addition of these two values. So things are looking pretty good. In the lab, we're gonna be simulate uh, a 25 ppm. So um, just based on what we did here, you should be able to figure out how to simulate 25 ppm, diluting the 50 ppm to 25 ppm. And then we're gonna perform what they call a a uh, relative accuracy test um, or a RATA test on the analyzer um, and then uh, and then do some calculations so uh, based on some stuff we did in class. All right so our next step here is to shut everything down. Uh, the first step for doing that is we're going to shut off our calibration gas here. Um, we want flow, we want flow going through both of these so we can bleed off all the pressure. So to do that the calibration gas or the nitric oxide we're going to shut off the main valve here first. It should be completely shut. And then we're going to wait for these gauges here to drop to zero. All right, so you can see the pressure's all been bled off here since we've shut this main valve. The next step, we're going to back the regulator all the way out. What that's going to do is when the next person that goes to use, it, use this uh, analyzer, when they go to open this valve here, this is going to pressure up, but no pressure is going to show on this side here, right? Because it's going to be backed out. Uh, then we're going to close the discharge as well, as precaution, so this is backed out, this is closed, and this valve is closed, and both gauges should read zero. So the next step is to do the same thing with the nitrogen here. We want to do this one last because the nitrogen is going to be used to purge out all the nitric oxide. So it's still flowing, we're just going to shut it in, and then we should see this gauge start to drop here. And I'll just take, I'll just go back around to the other side, make sure there's still flow. Yeah, we can see the sapphire ball is still flowing here at 100, and that's going to push any nitric oxide out of, out, of this, out of this line here, out of the analyzer. So once this drops to zero, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to back this out and shut this valve as well. And both these gauges should read zero when we're done. All right, so both of these gauges are now reading zero. The, the, uh, the gas has been bled down to the main valve here that's shut. We're going to back this out. So then that will prevent the regulator from allowing any pressure through and this valve's open again. And then we're gonna shut this valve. So there, when we're done, should be zero pressure on these gauges and regulator backed out, valve sh this valve shut and the main valve shut and the same over here as well. And now the analyzer is shut down. The last step is to, uh, we can pull our connection here between the uh, Analyzer sample and the gas and the gas dilution out. And right now we're just holding it, setting it on the handles there, and then the very last step here, uh, when we're done with the analyzer, is we're going to shut it off. And uh, uh, of course, it needs to be warmed up before we're using it. It needs to be warmed up, but we're going to have uh, uh, a tech make sure that it's powered on uh, before use next time. So we can power it off when we're done. We don't want to wear out the pump inside of the analyzer. That's why we're shutting this analyzer down. This is one of the very few analyzers that we shut down and it's because of that pump in there. We want to save, save the life of the pump.